In this video, I'm gonna add a search bar to the home screen just like we have on reddit.com. So in our website up here, there will be a search bar where users can search for particular blog posts. So the first step in this procedure is we're gonna go into blog views and I'm gonna create a function for getting a query set uh, based on a particular search. So I'm gonna define a, a function named get blog query set. It'll take one input or one parameter as input. So query equals none. The query set will equal a new list. The queries are going to be a list of all the queries that were entered by the user. So basically what I wanna do is I wanna take whatever they entered, I want to remove all the white space. So I'm splitting it up and I'm creating a list out of all the queries. So like for example, if they searched for uh, Python install 2019, this would split it up into a list that says Python install 2019. And these would all be strings. So then I'm gonna search those terms individually and look for results. So I'll just, I can leave that here just to give you a little bit more, uh, more help. So then for Q inside of queries, I want to search for posts. So posts equals blog post dot objects dot filter. And I want to use something called Q lookup, which I haven't imported yet, but that's what this Q is going to be. And I want to do I contains, or no, I just want to do contains. I want to do, or uh, actually, I contains will get rid of any capitalization. So uh, I'll use I contains for both of these. I contains or Q body, I contains equals Q also, and close that off. And then I wanna find, I wanna call distinct, which will make sure that all of the posts in that list that's retrieved is unique. And it looks like I put a one there, that's supposed to be a Q. So next is I want to loop, I want to do for post in post. So I'm looping through each one of those. I want to do query set, which is the parameter that I declared at the top there. And I want to do append the post. So I'm adding all of those posts to a query set. The last step is going to be returning that, that list, but I want to return a unique list. So I'm converting it to, I'm converting it to a set and, and converting it to a list at the end, and I'm taking in the query set. So a set will, will make sure that it's unique, and then I'm converting it to a list, which I can send to my template. And like I said, the last step here is gonna be importing Q for, for doing uh, Q lookups. So from django.db.models import Q, and pressing Control S to save that. Next, I'm going to edit the home screen view. So going into views inside personal, and I'm gonna edit this because now we need to add some kind of query functionality to this. We need to be able to accept a query as input. So by default, I'm gonna have a query equal to empty. And I'm gonna say if request.get, so if it's a get request, my query will equal request.get my parameter Q. So that's gonna be passed through the search bar using a get request. If that is, if uh, if we have a query, I want to return that to the template because I'm gonna need to display that in the search bar. So let's see, I think that is it for here. So if there was a get request, search for the parameter Q. If there's a parameter Q, then pass it as, well, whether or not there is a parameter Q, we still will pass the query to uh, to the template. Next, we need to actually create the, the uh, search bar. So I'm gonna go into templates, go into snippets, go into header.html, and I'm going to add a search bar here. So just below the H5 right here, I'm going to create a new div. So div class, I'm gonna call it, give it a class name of search bar. We haven't defined this CSS obviously yet. Margin top, small two, margin right two. And inside here, I wanna do a form and that form is gonna be performing a get request, just like uh, we talked about in the view. Remember, we're looking for, in, uh, in the view here, we're looking for a get request. So this form will do a get request. It's gonna have a single input. The type will be text. I will have a class, whoops, class equals form control to give it some styling. Um, the name is gonna be Q, as I talked about in the template. The ID can be ID underscore Q and the placeholder will be search dot dot dot. So that's gonna be our form. So now we need the uh, the CSS for this search form. So I'm coming up here, I'm gonna write search form 
and the CSS just needs max width equals 500 pixels. And I want to do width width is 100%. So it's always occupying as much space as possible with a max width of 500 pixels. So if I go back to our project now and I refresh this, we see that uh, there's that search bar up there. It actually looks a little small. I think I need to set the form width to 100% also. So, so I'll just do form uh, width is 100%. Try that, go back, refresh. Still looking a little small. Let's go back to sublime text. Uh, I don't know. I think I don't think we need this. This price, yeah, this pricing header and the card deck. Maybe that's interfering with it somehow. No, it looks like still that search form is that search. This is too. It should be longer. Oh, I see the problem. This this is search form, but it should be search bar. So if I change that and I refresh and I go back to the project, there we go. Our search bar is longer. So that is how it should behave. Okay. So everything is everything's okay. But we need to do one more thing before we move forward. This uh, inside of the header, there's actually an issue. So usually what uh, what we can do is, remember in the view, we're passing the query as a parameter here. And what I was gonna do is do value equals to the query. That's what we've done in the past in our forms. But for some reason in the search form, it doesn't want to work properly. So I had to create a, a little script down here to force it to work, basically to, to set it manually using JavaScript. So I'm just going to do document dot get element by ID and the reference is ID underscore Q. And uh, I just want to set the value. So dot value equals to the query. And for some reason that works fine. So it's just referencing the ID and setting the value. But when you set the value using the value attribute, it doesn't work. I'm not sure why I'm really not. If you know, leave a comment and uh, I'd be interested to hear what's going on there. So next is the blog post snippet. We need, uh, right now, this will display blog posts if there is any blog posts that have been found, but we need something to display if there are no blog posts. So if the query is made and there's nothing found, basically. So I wanna do if blog, if blog post, then I, then I know I found something. So else, and then end, oops, and if down here. Actually, I'll move this to the outside of the container. So if there's a blog post, let's let's move this to the outside of the container. Yeah, that seems to be more clear. So if there's a blog post, do that. Otherwise, we're going to create another container. Whoops. Div class container. Div, this is going to be div class row. So same kind of thing we did up there. Inside here, we're going to have a card. So things are looking very similar. Card margin auto inside that card i want to do another div this div will be div class card body margin top two margin bottom two uh, then i just need a title so an h2 and inside this h2 i just want to say no results and let's give this a class of card title and then below this h2 i just need a p tag and this p tag will have whoops have a class of card text uh, don't need any margins or anything I'll just say there were no results matching your search and I can print out the query there so let's see whoops query close that off there we go so that will tell the user there was nothing matching their search and it will print out the query let them letting them know what that query was that they just made so I'm pressing control s to save that oh actually I need to change a, C, a piece of CSS up here. This needs to have a width of width of 100% because right here this is this is not going to be very big. So we want the card to always occupy the full full size. I think I could actually test it right now. So if I was to search something, oh no, it's not. No, 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 we're not set up yet because we need to edit home.html. So I'm going to go into home.html. And I need to change the blog post section right here. So right now it says if there is, I, sh I should actually do an if statement here. If there is blog posts, then do what we were doing before. So I'll do an else and then an if, and if. So if there's blog posts, do what we were doing before. Otherwise, we want to do something else. So div class blog post container, the same class we're using up here, but uh, we're going to use the snippet a little differently. 
So I'm going to copy this snippet, paste it in. Uh, but there's no blog post, but there is a query. So I'm going to do with query equal to query. So save that uh, and take a look at the blog post snippet again. So if there's a blog post, it'll do what, what, what it was doing before. Otherwise, that means we have a query and it will print out the query. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to refresh. I'm going to search this. Looks like it's still not doing what it's supposed to. And that is because if we go back to our views, our blog views, remember we built this get blog query set function, but we never actually applied it. So I need to import that. So from blog dot views import get blog query set, and we need to actually apply that to this view. So I want to call the function here, get blog query set and pass the query. Because remember, it takes a query as an input right there, and it will search for blog posts that match that query. So now that that's changed, let's go back to our website. I'm going to refresh it. Looks like I have a spelling mistake. I contains that should be I contains. So save that, go back, refresh. And looks like we have another another error. So uh, unsupported lookup I contains for text fields or join on the field is not permitted. Perhaps perhaps you meant I contains or contains. Did I spell oh constraint? <laughs> I spelled it wrong again. There's an S there on the other one. Okay, another spelling mistake. Let's refresh. There we go. There's our website. So right now nothing is being searched. Let's try and just search some random stuff. Looks like no search results. The first error I see is that this should be occupying the full width. So if I go into Let's see, it was a blog post snippet, or was it was it home or no, yeah, it was blog post snippet. So the card body should be occupying the full, or maybe let's set it to the card. The card should occupy the full width. Let's go back to this, refresh, and there we go. We see it's now occupying the full width, which is what we want. So now let's search something that should have results. It says nothing for Python. So that's obviously wrong. Uh, because if we search nothing, we know that, oh no, we do have, we have nothing with Python actually. So it should be flutter and we get that first blog post. That's good. So what about, uh, let's say displaying lists. We still get this. Remember this has it in the title. Let's test the other one. So first blog post, this is some HTML. So I'll search some HTML. Looks like both of them have some HTML. So let's go first blog. Looks like both of them have that too. Uh, I'm trying to get something unique to this, maybe HTML. There we go. So you can see that it is it is searching correctly. I am able to search for different blog posts based on different uh, queries and they're being filtered. And also the no results is working the same also. I just want to do one last thing before we move on to the next video. I want to change the styling of this footer down here. So go into footer.html. I just don't really like the way that it looks right now. I'm just going to add a little, like a tiny bit of styling to this. So going into this class, I want to say background white border top. I actually don't think that it will put a border on the top. I'm not sure, but let's take a look anyway. And then say shadow large. So let's refresh that. Now it goes to white. Oh, I want to get rid of that HR. So get rid of that. Save, go back. And there we go. That looks a little better. So it did actually add a shadow on the top. Or I'm not sure if it's just because I use shadow larger or or um, border top, but I'll save that. Yeah, that looks the same. So it looks a little nicer. Obviously, you'd want to have a nicer looking footer in a real production website, but this is going to improve the look just a little bit. So that is going to be it for this video. We're nearing the end. As you can probably tell, I'm trying to rush through this because I'm very eager to build the REST API and build the application. I want to get this website done. Uh, so the next video is we're just going to add pagination to the home page. So if there's, you know, 10 blog posts, then you'll have pagination. Uh, or if there's, you know, 100 blog posts, sorry, we're going to add pagination. So only the first 10 results show, then you got to go to the next page and the next page, and so on. Um, and then after that, we're going to be pretty much done, I think, and I'll work on deploying this to production and setting up Amazon Web Services.